When we opened Otelengi, it was quite successful from the beginning because people needed this connection to a healthier, more flavorsome food. And we tried to make it a little bit more interesting. It's unusual flavors that they got introduced to. And that was kind of revelation. I don't want to say that, but you know, we changed the way people eat here in the UK. We all eat and we all enjoy food and this is what matters. With the Palestinian hospitality, they just want to offer you the best they have and they want you to feel welcome and well-fed. It's this spread of food on the table. It's not this kind of mean little portion. It's just this beautiful bounty. And so you can just kind of keep on going and pick and go as you like. So we're in the Otlingi test kitchen. And today we're gonna do a shawarma pie. Shawarma is like a donut kebab, but because the flavor profile is so important in the Palestinian kitchen, we wanted to replicate that in a kind of more elaborate filo pie with potatoes. So first things first, get the chicken marinating. The recipe in Palestine have different spices for flavor, but waiters have this really good shawarma mix. So we substitute all the spices from the book into one tap. We're also just going to add a little pinch of turmeric for a bit of colour. And then we're going to add crushed garlic. Sammy, the big question of the day, are you pro garlic crusher or anti? The most divisive of all kitchen gadgets. No, I have actually three of them at home and I use them all the time. <laughs> I think the garlic crusher is actually better because you get also all the juices. And then about two centimetres of ginger. Don't be tempted to use powdered ginger because it's really not the same. And then we're just going to have a couple of tablespoons of cider vinegar, one tablespoon of olive oil, good grind of black pepper, a pinch of salt, give it a mix. Also, you can use breast if you like. We like the thigh because, you know, it's a little bit more fatty and kind of moist, but it will work with any part of the chicken. Okay, let's give my hands a wash. So we're going to put the chicken in the fridge to marinate for half an hour or an hour or overnight if you're getting ahead. And the full recipe is in the description notes below. When Tara started the journey with Palestine, she didn't really know much about Palestine, the place and how it works and what they eat. And it was all kind of a lot of questions. In a way, I sort of was like the reader who myself wanted to know more about a place. And I think you can often be intimidated by your lack of knowledge about a country. And you almost sort of feel like you're too silly to ask the first question. And a cookbook is just a really safe way in. So now we're going to do the potatoes. I'm not peeling these potatoes. I'm just going to get rid of the ends and then slice them. I love this idea that the shawarma normally comes with chips and then we've just sort of put them in the pie instead. When you go in the Middle East and buy shawarma, they will always ask you, chip salad? So it's kind <laughs> of one word, chip salad. But if you don't want to use potatoes, you can use other things like sweet, parsnip. Celeriac is really lovely in here as well. So the recipe said to put them in a bowl and mix them. I shortcut and it's less to wash. Seasoning. And then in they go. Okay, now I'm gonna fry the onion. So I'm just thinly slice it. To the pan, I'm gonna add a bit of butter, olive oil, and just keep an eye on them. You want to cook them down for five minutes. So you don't want too much color on these, do you? It's just to soften them down a bit, five yeah. minutes. A good grind of black pepper, a bit of salt. And then while these onions are cooking, I'm gonna check on the potatoes. They need to be turned. Should I come in with my tongs? Yeah, just kind of turn them. And then, and there you go again. Sammy would say that the book that he first thought we were going to write was very different from the one we ended up with. So he came with very traditional recipes. And then we quickly realised that this wasn't the book that we wanted to write. A, because it's been written before and you can find those very traditional recipes. And also we want it to be really available to the busy home cook. I just remember going home and thinking, who's going to actually trust you for three days? <laughs> um, and then it kind of clicked that, you know, we just need to do recipes that actually people are not scared to do. You can actually stay loyal to the cuisine and the culture with slight changes. I mean, a few times we had this thing where it's a delicious finished product, but it's all kind of brown or beige and it's not pretty to look at. So we started to take some of the elements from the dish and make it a little bit more sexy and yeah. nice and looking good. We also don't want to have ingredients that people can't get hold of because there's no point reading about an amazing lamb cooked in some kind of fermented disc of yogurt if you can't get it in your waitrose. 
So now the onions are nicely soft and glistening. I'm gonna add now the chicken here. And the idea of adding the chicken in here is to give it a nice color, but also for the onions to get all the flavor from the chicken. So while this is cooking, Tara is gonna start doing the tahini. Tahini is just a really lovely, useful ingredient. It's just really creamy and nutty. Here it's mixed with yogurt, a bit of lemon juice, garlic, and a bit of water. But you can do it without the yogurt, or you can add some parsley, blitzed in for a kind of green tahini sauce. Time to add the chicken stock in here. This is not a book at all tinged in sepia. The stories we tell are not of aunties and grandmothers from generations before. They're all about the lives and businesses, families and relationships that are all happening today. OK, so now the chicken been cooking and the sauce has been reduced to about four tablespoons. And I'm going to just take it off the heat. I have two forks here that I'm going to basically just kind of Shred, shred the chicken, but don't shred them too small. You want nice chunks. It smells so good. Yeah. So, Sammy, I'll just chop the herbs. We've just got five grams of parsley and coriander, and then that's going to be added. A bit of freshness. And this is going to be lovely when it's piled into the pie with the layer of potatoes and the tahini, but also for a quicker supper, this is just in itself totally divine. Either kind of piled into a pita or have with rice or salad or whatever you want, and just the tahini sauce is delicious. I have to assemble. Do you want to do the introduction? Uh, well, I just love this sort of thing where you can get all the elements ready in advance. I'm crazy about this type of cooking. The most important thing is to buy a good phyllo pastry. Waitress stock a couple of them so you can play around, but keep the phyllo covered. This is the one stage where you've got to work quite quickly because the phyllo will dry out and then it will crack. Yeah, so I'm just doing a bit of He's back drizzling to his around. Palette. Yes. <laughs> Very artistic and just brush them. This just melted butter and olive oil. And just don't worry about if it kind of breaks or tears. This is the beauty of dish like this where you know you're not gonna see it at the end. And just keep doing. We want to do six layers of the pastry. The points are here, so you want to kind of do it next. Just slightly rotate around. Yes. And keep it's going. It's just kind of magic filo pastry, isn't it? It's so thin. I've seen it a couple of times in Istanbul, how oh they my do God. it. It's like a massive bed sheet, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely extraordinary. And it's a really skillful thing. They spend all their life mastering how to do it. It's just so surreal to see it. And also makes you very grateful for being able to buy shop bought. There was one recipe in Palestine for these very thin, lacy pancakes called Athayef. And we were trying to perfect them here in the test kitchen and they were so difficult. And eventually Sammy phoned his sister and said, you know, what's the secret? Like, what, what do I do? And she said, oh, don't be daft. Everyone just buys them from the shop these days, ready made. <laughs> so we were trying to outdo the Palestinian housewife herself. So now I'm going to organize these potatoes at the bottom of the pie. And at this stage, I'm adding also the chicken with all the bits. You just want to push all the chicken into all the corners of the tin and kind of slightly flatten it. And then the tahini goes on top. And now I need another two sheets of phyllo. And this time, I'm going to fold it in half. Close it like a book. You can eat your book. <laughs> Just folding everything kind of in a random manner <laughs> and more of the butter. This dish is a rich dish. You've got all the chicken, the potatoes, the tahini, the phyllo, all the butter. But it goes a long way. You're not going to eat a quarter of this pie. It's one that you'd have as part of a spread or with salads. Well, saying that, some people have probably half of it <laughs> as well. I have here nigella seeds that I'm going to sprinkle on. They add a really nice texture and flavor. And the and nigella look fantastic, but if you haven't got nigella seeds, you could use a little bit of black sesame seeds, would be fine. The nigellas are great, but there are alternatives. Now, 180 for 60 minutes. Beautiful. It's very unusual for a man to be cooking traditional Palestinian dishes because women actually control the kitchen. There was a couple of times when we went back to Palestine together and we were doing some cooking and Sami, this kind of internationally renowned chef, definitely had to kind of prove himself because he was a man. Okay, so the pie now is ready. <gasps> Ta-da! Moment of truth. Beautiful. So now I'm just going to pop it into the serving board and just garnish it. 
pulled bee burr is a lovely, gentle chili. But again, if you haven't got pulled bee burr, a little bit of earth for chili flakes, if you've got some of those. So Max, that are you can use as well. There's something so celebratory about a pie, isn't there? Something about all being kind of wrapped up for the great reveal. It's also all the nice noise that the Crispin is doing. So here it is. A little salad next to it would be perfect. <laughs>